thing is that is the continuous casting particularly as a metallurgist we know that uh, in future we are going to deal with steel and uh, frequently we are going to deal with steel because apart from the steel uh, also we have to deal with some non ferrous materials but uh, rarely we are going to deal with the non ferrous materials so first we will deal we will discuss about the steel so coming to steel what is steel actually so steel is a alloy steel is an alloy made up of iron with added carbon so added carbon to improve the strength as well as to improve the fracture resistance of the material so why actually added carbon is said added carbon means during the peak iron making in the blast furnace we are uh, using coke as a raw material so whenever the iron ore is coming along with the coke in a downward motion so what happens that coke uh, fine particles uh, are generated from the coke these are the carbon particles ultimately these carbon particles are going to join with that of the peak iron as well as the slag so definitely it will be there in the peak iron and uh, actually we are going to get a, a, a composition of around 3 to 4 percent of carbon in that of the peak iron so that carbon is also transferred into steel so steel contains some carbon so this is about the steel and uh, for the uh, making of steel actually different furnaces are developed right from that of the open heart furnace but open heart furnace was the first furnace developed but after that it is modified and now the best furnace or the adoptable furnace is that is the LD converter. In each plant or every plant we are going to produce steel by using the LD converter. So now we are coming to that of the LD converter. So this is the picture of the LD converter. So in the LD converter what we are going to do now we have to take the pig iron molten pig iron we have to add the scrap uh, steel scraps particularly we are going to add as well as some flux we are going to add and through a lens from the top we are supplying the oxygen that oxygen strikes the bath and uh, what it does inside the metal that it uh, tries to improve the uh, oxidize the impurities so impurities get oxidized and uh, after the oxygen lensing the bath is kept stationary so during this stationary most uh, stationary period actually slag is uh, due to lighter nature it will collect in a separate layer at the top so by tilting the converter we can take out the slag and we can take out the steel separately and this is the ld converter uh, picture of a plant actually so in this process actually what uh, we did we produced the molten steel but as a metallurgist what we have to do it with the molten steel because our ultimate aim is to brought it to the market in a sellable position usable position particularly so how can we convert them into usable position first we have to cast into a very simplified shape and that shape is called as the ingot actually ingot is just like a brick it is having a rectangular shape uh, three dimensional shape actually it is and it is a very simplified shape so previously in the early period actually that ingot was casted by the discontinuous casting what is that discontinuous casting discontinuous casting means we have to uh, take a mold box for a particular casting of a single ingot we have to take a mold box inside which we are adding the molten steel and from the sides we are cooling it by the water and the steel will gradually solidify and whenever we will take out from the ingot we will get the uh, we will take out from the mold box we will get the ingot so this is the situation so but this situation uh, is actually for the commercial product commercial plant or that is for the um, uh, like that of the large scale plants uh, this was not feasible because uh, so the production it was very slow then the metallurgist thought what to do so that we can increase the production rate so the gradually the thought came to the conclusion that they reach at a, a point where they develop a continuous casting process so continuous casting process means actually we are solidifying the steel into a semi finished set that is uh, this is the continuous casting actually continuous casting means generally we are uh, solidifying the steel into a semi finished step, uh, stage that is uh, called as ingot or particularly it is called as the billet or bloom 
so we are casting that and that bilator bloom is subsequently put into the rolling mill where they will convert it into the finished shape which we can sell in the market so this is our concept of the continuous casting but this continuous castings uh, lot of machines also developed for this continuous casting different concepts came regarding this continuous casting so first concept came uh, so uh, uh, till now three different concepts has came to the uh, picture actually uh, the first concept is that is called as the vertical type of continuous casting first is the vertical type of continuous casting second one is the vertical mold and horizontal discharge type of continuous casting third one is the cord mold type or h type and this is also called as the low head type of machines so first we are coming to the vertical type of continuous casting in the this is the picture of the vertical continuous casting here what we are going to do that we are trying to cast the ingot into a long bar so for that we are using a single mold box here a single mold box is used and uh, in this mold box as well the top as well as bottom is uh, vacant so no no top is provided no bottom plate is provided only the side walls four side walls are provided with that of the mold box and uh, this uh, we are putting the steel uh, from the top and one false bottom is given that is called as a plug so whenever we will withdraw the plug the bar will come out from the mold box so how we are putting the steel in this mold box first we are taking the steel in a ladle is it okay one minute please we are taking the steel in a ladle so that ladle from the this ladle the steel will transfer to tundis so tundis will closely regulate the flow of the steel into the mold box what is the function of tundis actually so it is also looks like that of the ladle but here it regulates the flow of the steel that means we can take out the steel from the tundis at a constant rate the addition of steel from the tundis into the mold box will be at a constant rate so that we can operate the machine in a smooth way so first we have taken the steel in a ladle this ladle will transport into the tundis tundis will transfer into the mold box but here for a close regulation of the steel into the mold box here stoppers are provided both in the ladle as well as the tundis so that if the addition speed is little bit increase we can control or it is little bit decrease we can control the speed of the flow so that we can maintain a constant flow rate so this mold box is a water cool mold box so that it can give partial solidification to the steel that means when the steel will come out from the mold box a skin will form or surround the steel solidified skin will form so what we did how we started the operation that this mold box is water cool from all the sides we are cooling by the water first we have kept a false bottom or that is called as a plug it is kept below the mold box we have added the steel from the tundis into the mold box whenever a particular uh, level is raised or steel has filled up to a particular level we are just now withdrawing the plug so whenever we are withdrawing the plug the steel bar is coming out with a solidified skin but uh, here one thing we have to do as a engineer that uh, as a metallurgist that the speed of the withdrawal of the plug should be equal to the speed of addition of steel so that at any time we have to maintain the level our speed is a constant speed once the material or the bar is coming out from the mold box then a secondary cooling zone it has to face a secondary cooling zone because i have told you that whenever the steel is coming out from the mold box a thin skin is formed it is just giving the protection to the inside core liquid metal but when it is not entirely solidified it has uh, no strength has been developed to that of the steel bar steel bar so whenever it is coming out it is facing the secondary cooling zone where it is also called as a roller apron because uh, it has to pass through the rollers and in between the rollers actual water sprays are there that water spray is directly forcing uh, focusing upon that of the steel bar 
so that the cooling rate will be faster once the steel is coming out from the the secondary cooling zone the withdrawal rolls are there so withdrawal rolls will just pick up the ingot or the bar hence the uh, plug work is over we can take out the plug and these withdrawal rolls are controlling the speed of the movement of the bar because these withdrawal rolls are attached with the motors so depending upon the speed of these withdrawal rolls the bar is coming out from the mold box this is the speed actually speed controlling device so once it is coming out so it has to by this time actually the steel bar is entirely solidified entirely solidified because it has passed through the secondary cooling zone so once it is passing through the withdrawal rolls a cutting torch is there so particularly we are going to use the oxy oxy acetylene cutting torch that cutting torch is placed just below the withdrawal rolls and the bar is continuously coming so we are focusing upon a particular point suppose a cutting torch is focusing at a particular point and the bar is continuously coming down so how can we end the cutting of the material so for to avoid this situation our cutting torch is also moving at the same speed with that of the withdrawal of the bar so that we can focus upon a particular point particular point after cutting the material again the cutting torch will return to its original position because it has to start from that position and that bar is cut that is called as the ingot that will be laid horizontal and that will come to the floor level that will go to the storehouse actually so this is the situation but here as a metallurgist we have to focus upon the speed of the withdrawal that speed of the withdrawal is generally done by this withdrawal rolls this is controlling because this sorry this is the withdrawal rolls are there these withdrawal rolls are controlling the speed of the bar withdrawal speed of the bar and uh, here this uh, all these things are constantly controlled means that withdrawal speed of the bar that is by this rollers withdrawal rolls addition of the steel from the torn disc all should match otherwise if the steel addition is little faster overflow will be there from the mold box or steel addition is little slower a stage may come that bar will completely come out from the mold box so we have to avoid avoid such situation so all these uh, the movements or that is the addition of the steel all these things are controlled very closely so that we can get a solidified bar and it is a continuous process so here the speed of the speed uh, we can control and also we can get the product at a faster rate so this was the vertical but here one negative thing is there uh, this is shown in the picture it is uh, looking like a small picture but when this will be in a practical situation the height of this shop is very tall actually so it is quite difficult to hang the ladle of steel at such a height as well as the tondis at such a height so they thought can we reduce the shop height then another process developed the second process that is called as the vertical mold and horizontal discharge type so this is the situation the second one the second one is vertical mold and horizontal discharge type here what they are doing that the mold box is kept vertical situation in the vertical position and here the all these situations that all these things that is the ladle that is the torn disc mold box all these things are okay secondary cooling is also equal to that of the vertical type but what is the difference modification they did after the material is coming out bar is coming out from the secondary cooling zone a bending roll is provided so that it will try to discharge the product or bend the product to finally make it horizontal some straightening rolls are also provided so that once the bar is bent and it will be again straight and it will brought horizontal so up to this is okay up to that of the secondary cooling system it is similar to that of the vertical type in order to reduce the shop height just they try to bend the product and the product is coming in a horizontal direction 
and here a cutting torch is provided that cutting torch is also has to move in a horizontal direction otherwise it will cut if the cutting will never end it is moving in a horizontal direction after cutting the material it will return back to its original position so this is the slab or the ingot we are going to get out is it okay so here another modification is done that uh, whenever the material or the bar is coming out from that of the mold box when the bar is coming out from the mold box actually there is a chance that that skin may rupture because it will be little sticky with that of the wall of the mold box so whenever it is coming out the skin has not got to, uh, sufficient thickness because it is cooled indirectly we are cooling the a uh, mold box mold box is trying to cool the ingot so the skin formed is a not very thick it is thin so if it will be little sticky with that of the mold wall the result will be cracking of the skins whenever it is coming out from the mold box so whenever it is coming out from the mold box it will be it will crack it there is a chance it will crack so what the concept came one scientist that is jangan they developed a principle that can we use a moving mold he just use a moving mold technology that means that mold box is oscillating about its axis that mold box is oscillating so that the ingot uh, skin is always that means it is detached from that of the ingot skin inside the mold box and that oscillation is around 40 mm 40 to 60 mm distance that oscillation is for a distance of 40 to 60 mm now the question comes what should be the speed of oscillation so it will come to down and again it will rise to and uh, just uh, return back with the original position so the speed of the downward speed should be equal to that of the speed of the withdrawal of the ingot but the upward stroke or the upward speed is three times greater than that of the downward speed that means at what speed it is coming down at three times faster speed it is returning back to its original position that means it is just oscillating about its position so that what the benefit we are going to get that that skin will not attach permanently with that of the mold one it will never stick that means skin is in a detached position so whenever the material or the bar will come out from the mold box the chances of structure of the skin is avoided so this is called as the jungans principle that jungans principle is applied upon the vertical type also in the vertical mold and horizontal discharge type of the machining here what the advantages we got that uh, the redox we saved the 30% floor height but simultaneously the floor space required is increased floor space required is increased also it is having certain disadvantages that though we are bending the mold box the bending the bar so it is particularly uh, that is adequate for the smaller and medium cross section bars bigger cross sections bars cannot be bent easily because whenever it is bending already it is partially solidified so we need large force that bending roll should be of sufficient rigidity otherwise the bending roll will be affected so it is popular for the medium and small size cross sections also during the breakdown period any machine is running one stage will come maintenance will be required so whenever the maintenance will be required for this it is difficult to just take out the bend ingot from the bend bar from that of the mold box it was also a challenge for us so that's why this process also uh, gone through the development and finally a process come that is called as the curved mold type in the final stage actually the mold itself is a curve one the mold box itself is a curve one all these things that is the molten metal in the ladle it will transfer into the turn disc turn disc will transfer the molten metal into that of the mold box and that mold box is a curved mold box and that curved mold box is also following the jungans principle that means it is also oscillating about the its own axis curvature it is oscillating and once the bar is coming out it is already bent and just we are focusing to make it horizontal 
already it is bent inside the mold box so once it is coming out again it is facing the secondary cooling zone again some rolls are there the withdrawal rolls are there and then the straightening rolls are there after the end of the straightening rolls that is a cutting torch or cutting device is there it will cut and similar thing happens the cutting torch is moving horizontal after the end of cutting it has to return back to its original position this is the situation but here all these negative things are avoided the first in the vertical type floor shock was uh, high so that is reduced by this in the second case actually vertical mold and horizontal discharge shape machine here larger cross sections we cannot cast but here though the ingot is bent or that is the bar is bent inside the bend uh, that is curved uh, mold the, that's why the bending is carried out whenever the steel is not solidified so we can cast bigger cross sections of the bars by this process so all these things are avoided in the third steps and that machine is also called as the edge type of machine though the curved mold is used also height of the shop is small that's why it is also called as the low head machine so this is about the continuous casting and particularly this continuous casting is used for the commercial production in large scale plants but for uh, small plants uh, small units like casting units they can cast by using the discontinuous casting but the production rate will be slow but this by using continuous casting we can reduce the slab in a different way again that slab, slab will uh, store in a storehouse it will go for the further processing and it will carry it to that of the rolling mill where they will by the application of the rolls they can be deformed into the different shapes like the slabs plates blue other things will be strips etc will be produced by this so this is all about that of the continuous casting for more details we can follow the, uh, so this is the picture of the ingot that is produced or that is the bar or billet that is produced this is the picture of this now we are coming to the advantages so advantages of continuous casting first advantage we are going to get is improvement in steel quality why improvement in steel quality actually during the discontinuous casting we have taken a single mold box we have put the molten steel inside that so what will happen always the steel contains some gas always it contains gas so that gas will some gas will come out from the mold box and some gas will just stay just below the solidified skin so these are named as the flow holes so these are the gas cavities also some pipes can generate so this type of defects may arise during the discontinuous casting but in a continuous casting that type of defects will be just negative these are minimized or there are no such type of defect is found in that of the continuous casting better yield quality of the steel we produced is a better one faster rate of production is there then third thing is saving the energy and manpower in a discontinuous casting our production was uh, slow and uh, the rate of production was slow as well as lot of manpower are required a lot of mold boxes are required and uh, so energy as well as power required the manpower requirement is high but in this case we save the energy we save the manpower also so this is all about the continuous casting for more details we can go through this nptl site so Thank you all.